We've asked uh, some two individuals who have uh, very serious and long-term uh, connections with Arctic issues. The first of which is Dr. Paul Beckman, who is up at Tufts University, has been over in England, he's been in California, a number of academic positions, but he has hit that science policy uh, diplomacy interface dealing with governance issues, and he can give us a short three, two, three to five minutes overview if you'll come. Paul, there'll be a chair for you when you come back up. I'm going to stay here until I get a chair. Oh, yeah, up here. Yeah, it's all yours. Uh, sorry. No problem. Hello. Um, <clears throat> I've been asked to be a discussant, so I'm going to make a few observations. Um, first, uh, the world has a new ocean. Uh, the Arctic Ocean that existed for centuries and even millennia, probably even tens of millennia, now is ice covered, ice free. So we had a, an ocean that was permanently ice covered that is now ice free. And the decisions that we make today will resonate centuries into the future. We have a profound responsibility. Um, in terms of looking at the Arctic, where we are today, I would note that we're entering a different phase. We've had a phase of research into sustainable development, which effectively began in 1987 when President Gorbachev gave a speech in Murmansk and he talked about the possibility of an Arctic Research Council. Uh, 1996, the Arctic Council was established. And today we have emerging a new phase. It's not a phase of research into sustainable development. It's a phase of investment into sustainable development. The concepts of the Arctic Economic Council have been introduced. At the World Economic Forum in Davos, there was an Arctic investment protocol that was introduced. Uh, Bloomberg identified a trillion dollars of investment that will emerge in the Arctic. So the questions in terms of future are how that investment will look in terms of achieving sustainability for the region. Um, both Mark and Julie talked about the Arctic Council and the chairmanship, the U.S. chairmanship, and I think part of the opportunity of the U.S. chairmanship is to reflect that this is the 20th anniversary of the, of the, of the Arctic Council. It began in 1996. So, and the United States is an Arctic state. Bear, bear no, no confusion, the, Arctic, the United States is an Arctic state. And on this 20th anniversary, it perhaps is, is worthwhile to take some reflection on what has happened during the first 20 years of the Arctic Council. From 1996 to 2009, the meetings were held mostly, the ministerial meetings at the end of each of the chairmanships were held mostly at the level of mid-level diplomats. That changed in 2009 when the foreign minister of Norway, Johannes Garth Thora, invited all of the ministers, including Secretary of State Clinton, to Norway to meet together. So since 2009, the process changed. It was a, a shift in the importance of the Arctic Council. It moved to ministers of foreign affairs. In 2011, as was mentioned, there was an agreement that came out of the ministerial meetings, agreement on search and rescue. In 2013, there was an agreement on pollution prevention preparedness. So the ability of the Arctic Council to act changed fundamentally in 2009. In 2015, there was the development of the Arctic Economic Council, but there was a shift as well. Um, 2015, the eight Arctic states that had met at the level of ministers of foreign affairs didn't meet as a group. The, the Russian Ambassador Lavrov, uh, Foreign Minister Lavrov, didn't attend the meetings in Canada. So I would suggest as one important element of the U.S. chairmanship is to reunite the, the eight Arctic um, foreign ministers in, their, in the 2017 ministerial. So that's an element. Um, in terms of the future, looking forward, so we're at this, this sustainable investment in sustainable development. And I note that Julie mentioned that there's a working group or an activity dealing on considering elements of infrastructure. Infrastructure historically has been viewed in terms of built elements, ports, ships, communication systems, even observing systems, research systems, all of which involve a level of technical development and financing. 
But in order to achieve sustainability in the Arctic, I would suggest that the definition of infrastructure has to be fundamentally broadened to include both the built elements plus the governance mechanisms. So in a mechanism like a search and rescue agreement, while it's forward looking and anticipates challenges, is insufficient in the absence of the built elements to achieve that. Similarly, if we had all of the icebreakers and there wasn't cooperative, coordinated, consistent application of those icebreakers, it wouldn't achieve sustainability either. So in terms of thinking about infrastructure and trend of sustainability going forward, I would suggest that it, as an option, it is a combination of both governance mechanisms and built elements. One minute. Yep. If we're looking forward, I mentioned a, a change that occurred in 2009 where we went from uh, mid-level debt diplomats to foreign ministers. A next step in the development of the Arctic Council and of the, of the region will be to have a meeting among Arctic heads of state. Uh, it has been in the planning in a number of places. Uh, Finland, for example, has, in, has considered an Arctic head of state meeting since 2009. Uh, the next chairmanship will be in Finland. So these are some of the issues. It is an important region, not just because of the chairmanship being in the United States. It's an important region to the world in terms of transit, in terms of energy supplies, in terms of cooperation among major states. Uh, in many ways, the lessons that emerge from the Arctic in terms of how nations balance national interests and common interests will establish precedents that will resonate on a global scale for centuries into the future. So bear no mistake, the decisions that we make today for the Arctic will have relevance centuries into the future. Thank you. Paul, Paul, thank you very much for bringing these things together. I'll give you your chair back.